Something is watching. Hello everyone, this is Nostradante, and welcome to my world. Finally, the third and last installment of my Streets of Rage 4 enemy guide. And no Streets of Rage enemy guide is complete without the group of enemies that most beat em up players have nightmares and internet debates about. The bosses. Yes, we are finally going to dive into the big boys and girls of Streets of Rage 4 that are here to make sure that you don't make Wood Oak City a peaceful haven ever again. And believe me, this game is not short on these heavy hitters. Now if you need tips on how to handle their underlings, take a gander at the links in the description below or the cards in the upper right hand corner. Also note that this guy will not be utilizing infinite combos to beat the bosses since most people watching this video will be casuals or first timers. And most of the footage will be on Mania difficulty because if these tactics work on Mania, then it only makes sense that lower difficulties will be that much easier. This guy will also cover tactics and movesets during the first and second stages of the boss battles, although not every boss has two stages to them. So let's take down some freaking bosses. Time for the first boss of the game, D.Va. Streets of Rage 4 wasted no time in expressing equal rights for women, eh? Your first challenge is a shapely femme fatale with a penchant for shocking serpentine sidekicks. I gotta ask though, where does she get an electric snake from? How does she hold on to it when you knock her around? And how do you tame such a creature? It's Streets of Rage, it's not supposed to make sense. Anyways. D.Va is actually formidable for a first boss, especially if you are new to the game. Her attacks aren't soul crushing, but she hits often, is good with combos, AoE attacks, and has a lot of loyal simps in her corner. And since she's a boss, she has the anti-stagger armor game down to a science. Let's go through the moveset. Her intro is her very first attack, the electric discharge. She puts some style into this move with her Instagram pose. Hey, she is a diva after all. It is an AoE attack, so being anywhere near her will result in a shocking experience. It comes in three flavors. Normal, where there is a small delay before she shocks the ground. Quick, where there is little delay between the charge and release. And her stage 2 shock. When the screen freezes and she poses, she'll jump into the middle of the field to be the center of attention, like any diva. Charge up then releases a huge field of electricity that covers most of the ground. What makes the electric discharge so troublesome is that she gains anti-stagger armor the whole animation. This means you have little to no chance of interrupting the attack. Her stage 2 field discharge actually makes her almost invincible unless you use a star special. Upon recovery, she'll just do it again, so be warned. In fact, she'll use the weaker discharges upon recovery from knockdowns as well. Be sure to give her some space. Another attack she has is the Snake Strike. It is a quick attack where she strikes at you with the snake and shocks you. It's basically her punch move. And she can do it multiple times if she misses. It also comes with anti-stagger armor so you're not going to interrupt it. In my opinion, her most annoying attack is the Double Kick. It has an instant frame hit like Donovan's Jab or Dylan's Recovery Headbutt and it hits you twice. Also, it comes with anti-stagger armor. If she chases you closely, it usually means she's going to double kick you. Oh, but it gets worse. In stage two of this boss battle, she'll tag you with the double kick, which will send you flying, and then she hits you with the snake strike while you're in the air. Combo queen. Time to talk strategy on how to defeat this bag. Stage 1 consists of her mostly walking up to you and trying to double kick or snake strike you. Goad her into attacking by moving up and down, then attack her yourself. Be careful because sometimes she'll do her shock attacks. Don't try to counter her shocks because you'll either get hit by those residual sparks or she'll cancel into it with her other attacks almost immediately. You can also grab or combo D.Va if you close in on her from above and below, but she will take advantage of any distance you give her as you move in. Once she loses about 40% of her health, the real fun begins. She unleashes her grand spark move, and then some clowns join in to support their queen. 
Signal, Donovan, Gaussia, and Dylan provide very annoying distractions, especially the knife Gaussias and the pipe Donovans. Also, D.Va now has access to her double kick snake strike combo. Smash any thug that gets too close. Disarm knife Gaussias and pipe Donovans immediately because they can juggle you with D.Va's attacks. Anti-air isn't the best option due to Dylan's jump kick and Donovan's almighty uppercut. Even Diva Snake Strike could get you in midair. Remember to land on your feet if the signals throw you. Throw the thugs at Diva, but be warned that if her anti-stagger armor is on, she'll take damage yet will still attack. Use the knives and pipes against the thugs and Diva herself. If you manage to knock out Diva before you defeat the thugs, great. If not, and Diva is the last one standing, then follow the same formula since the beginning of the fight. Dodge, then counter with combos and throws. Do not be afraid to unleash specials and star specials if it gets too busy. Make sure to keep food on standby, prey on the openings, knock out the crazy thugs, and you shall come out victorious against this bad babe. Okay, so this will be one of three interruptions during the boss guide since I was working on the guide as the new patch hit. So really quick, D.Va got nerfed. For starters, her double kick still has one frame, but it no longer has anti-stagger armor. Uh, secondly, her snake strike is much slower now, but it still has armor. And third, uh, the double kick sends you higher in the air so the slow snake strike can still connect during her stage 2 combo. And lastly, the electric discharge on the ground disappears when she moves, as opposed to remaining on the ground while she attacks you. So less chance of you getting buzzed by it. Stay tuned for the commissioner notes and the final disclaimer. Prepare to fight the angriest cop in the city, the commissioner. I don't know why dude is so damn mad, sitting here and punching whole desks and whatnot. Oh well, we gotta knock some sense into this brute to cool him off. I know he's the second boss, but for newbies and first timers, he may be one of the harder bosses in the game. He has a great use of the anti-stagger armor and he hits hard and often. Dude can overwhelm you quick if you just rush in throwing fists without caution. Much like D.Va before him, he is most vulnerable after an attack. Be sure to strike quick because he can attack back to back. One of his quickest attacks is the Gut Punch. It has a very quick frame, but it is not particularly fearsome. It is only nasty during the second stage of the fight when the Commissioner combines the Gut Punch with the Overhead Punch. The Overhead Punch is slow, but comes with anti-stagger armor. By itself, it isn't fearsome either, but the Overhead Punch gets treacherous during the second stage of the fight when it is performing triples. The Commissioner glows white with anti-stagger armor before moving up or down while punching left to right. Getting hit by all three punches will ruin your day. When the Commissioner glows red, he is preparing to charge towards you to grab and then throw you. He tends to do this after you get knocked down, but sometimes he'll do it after missing his other attacks. Much like Signal, just hit him to cancel the attack. This next series of moves is what makes the Commissioner infamous. Apparently, he is a fan of Rugal from King of Fighters because when he gains anti-stagger armor and winds up on the edge of the screen, he performs the devastating gigantic pressure move. This dude glides across the screen with one hand outstretched in an attempt to grab you and then slam the crap out of you against the edge of the screen in an explosion. I mean, jeez louise, how powerful is this guy? Oh, it gets better. Once you get him to about 50% health, the screen freezes and he glows yellow while jumping to the edge of the screen. At this point, he is, for the most part, invincible and instead of going left or right in a straight line, he could come at you at a diagonal with the freaking gigantic pressure attack. Thankfully, he only does this once. At the second stage of the fight, he will power walk to the edge of the screen often and do the gigantic pressure move up to four times in a row. Talk about freaking anger issues. With all these moves this dude has, plus the anti-stagger armor, we got a tall strategy. This is generally not an easy fight. During the first stage, the commissioner will spend a lot of time trying to gut punch, overhead punch, or grab and slam you. Timing is everything. Trick him into attacking and then counter. If he glows red and chases you, hit him with a combo or grab him. Once he's taken about 10% damage, his subordinates Ferocio, or whatever, 
and Dick will arrive as backup. And there are a lot of them. The fight will begin to get quite dangerous because Ferocio's gut punches will stun you so the commissioner can hit you with his tough arsenal, while Dick grabs you so you can get jumped. Don't be afraid to target these uniformed thugs if they are getting on your nerves. Throw them at the commissioner if you have to. If you brought a weapon to the fight, use it to dispatch some of the cops. Stay on your toes, beat back the cops, and hit the commissioner when he's wide open after his attacks. So, you got him to 50% health. This fight is going to get ugly. He begins the second stage with the diagonal gigantic pressure. Stand below him so he will completely miss. But now Barney joins the fray. Yeah, remember him? Old Taser Boy? And he works very well with the commissioner. He can grab you with the taser, and while you're on the ground, the commissioner can hit you even if he does the gigantic pressure. Barney is just as aggressive as the boss, and don't forget that Ferocio and Dick may still be around. You need to get rid of Barney as soon as possible, for he will chase you to the ends of the earth, taser or no taser. While you are fighting the cops, the commissioner will be doing his multiple gigantic pressures or his triple overhead punches. He will also have access to the gut punch overhead punch combo. So let's say you defeated all the cops. You still have an angry commissioner deal. Once again, hit him after he's done attacking, especially after he hits the wall from missing his gigantic pressure move. The minute he hits that wall, combo him. When he does the triple overheads, hit him after the third punch. Wash, rinse, repeat, and you will calm his angry ass down. But be warned, because this isn't the last time you'll see the Commissioner. Alrighty, this is two of three interruptions of the boss guy. Uh, the Commissioner has been nerfed as well. His overhead and triple overhead punches are now much slower. Also, his gigantic pressure attacks happen when he jumps into position and he does them in doubles instead of quadruples during the second stage. Sometimes he'll throw in a double attack again, but he has a longer cooldown period. Once again, he jumps into position instead of the walking anti-armor. Last time folks, I promise. As you know, these videos take a long time and I was making it during the patch introduction, so the rest of the bosses will have pre and post patches included, which means no more annoying interruptions. Enjoy the rest of this boss beatdown, guys. Someone's got an upgrade. It's Nora. Remember Nora? She was that annoying dominatrix in the first Streets of Raid, where if you hit her, she would kneel and you could not hit her. Well, thank goodness she doesn't do that anymore. In fact, she has a new specialty, actually being a dominatrix. I'll explain in a few. As I said in my disclaimer, I'll be letting you guys know if there's any pre-patch or post-patch content dealing with these bosses. And luckily with Nora, she hasn't changed very much, so let's keep going. Now I'm going to be real. For the most part, this fight isn't very difficult unless you get overwhelmed by numbers. But before I get to that, let's go over Nora's abilities. She has a standard medium distance whip attack, where she preps her whip and cracks it with good forward momentum. It does decent damage, but it is easy to teleport. Nora also has a 3 hit whip combo, which is quicker and short range. It can do pretty good damage if all 3 connect, though sometimes you can break out of the combo. It is best to not get hit by the attack at all to be honest. But Nora has one more trick up her sleeve. Remember my first enemy guide video I mentioned those Super Saiyan Galaxias getting turned on by Nora's whip? Yep, That is her ultimate attack! A ton of, but not endless, Galaxias will fall out of the sky, for whatever reason, to help Nora. Sometimes they come with weapons, but when they get whipped by Nora, they gain more health, a quick double jab, anti-stagger armor, and the name GALCIA! and they will blindly mash you blow for blow until you take them down, but they will whittle your health down in the meantime. Meanwhile, Nora is whipping more Galaxias and turning them on. If you're surrounded by a group of these submissive bums and Nora, you're going to be in for a tough fight. Oh, almost forgot. Look at the far left of the screen. See that on the wall? It's a wall-mounted slab of spikes. 
Yeah, Dr. Robotnik's getting really turned on by this by now. If you touch it or get comboed into it, you're going to have a very bad day. But hey, you can toss enemies at it as well, so there is a silver lining. So, what do you do? At the beginning of the boss fight, she gets two of these Galsias going. I highly suggest you get in close and use grab attacks and throws. Better yet, throw them at Nora, but time it right, because if she whips them again, they will regain full health in mid-slam. She will also whip them to keep them topped off when she's not attacking you. Dispatch them quickly, then target her aggressively. In Boss Rush, the Galsios are more numerous than in the story. So either way, get as many hits on Nora as possible. Upon knockdown, she gains anti-stagger armor for a short time. Stay on her. Prevent her from arousing the Galsios as best as you can. Kill some of them if they start getting too numerous. Use any weapons floating around if possible. Avoid her attacks, don't get surrounded, and aggressively attack Nora as she runs around. This fight shouldn't give you too much trouble as long as you don't get complacent. Now, as a side note, I am going to include her palette swaps Bell, Queen, and Stiletto from the airplane level. They are here on this video and not on the last because they are the only palette swap bosses that are not in a dedicated boss fight. These three guard the entrance to the airplane cockpit on the 11th level and do not deploy Galsias to help them. Instead, they attack as a trio and have their own tricks up their sleeve. Now I'm going to mention pre and post patch info here just to make a comparison. Bell is the yellow shocking one. She has no anti-stagger armor whatsoever, but she's very aggressive and has both of Nora's whip moves with a bit of shock damage added to it. That's right, she's as electric as Electro from Streets of Rage 2. Now with the new patch out, there's been no changes to Bell, so don't worry about it. Queen is the grayish lady that only does the heavy whip attack that Nora does. As of the patch, she no longer has anti-stagger armor upon knockdown recovery. Stiletto is the one in black and the leader of the girls. She is the most dangerous because she has the most health and has a heavy whip attack that can go diagonally up or down. As of the patch, she has no more anti-stagger armor when she does the whipping attack. Heck yeah! If you can get them together, they aren't too bad. Belle and Queen have less health, so if you can take them out, it will make your job a lot easier. Stiletto is tough due to her health. But as long as you move up and down, it'll be harder for her to hit you. Specials work as well if you think she'll hit you. Just make sure you combo her to get your health back. And boom! No more crazy dominatrix. Here comes the toughest cop on the case, Estelle. Judging by her look, Estelle is not playing any games. You took out a lot of her forces, put the commissioner on the bench, and now you must pay. Estelle wouldn't look out of place in a dystopian action flick, and she'll show you why. Her first attack is the overhead elbow. It is similar to the Commissioner's overhead punch, except it is slightly slower and lacks anti-stagger armor. She can deploy it multiple times as she misses, but it isn't too fierce. Her second attack is the flip kick. This move is more annoying. She mostly uses it as a counter. If you grab her and don't attack, she can use it. Usually you will see it if you stand over her during a knockdown recovery, or she'll use it as anti-air. Her third attack is the flying spin kick. It is easily telegraphed, but if it connects, it will send you flying. She tends to do this when she needs to close the distance on you, and sometimes she isn't very accurate with it. Her favorite and most potent attack is the jab overhead flip kick combo. She loves this maneuver. If she gets in close, and she often will, she will punch you in the face, elbow you on the head, then kick you to the ground. It is rare to break this combo without a special. Just don't get caught. Now even though she is a total badass, she's still a police officer, and any police officer worth their salt will have backup. So after taking about 10% damage, she summons backup. In any case, guess what she does? She calls for the police special from Streets of Rage 1! Yeah, ain't that crazy? So at regular intervals, as you battle Estelle, a bomb will hit the ground as indicated by the red circle, stay out of the red circle, and explode with a ring of fire that can hurt you after the initial explosion. This can get annoying quick because the bombs can hinder your ability to execute long combos on Estelle, 
and she can combo you into the explosion without taking damage herself. Once she loses about 50% health, she'll request backup again, and this time, random Ferocio cops will fall from the sky and attack you. What the heck? If you're playing on Mania, you'll have four cops to deal with, a bunch of bombs, and a very determined Estelle coming for you at the same time. Once you've taken 80% of her health from her, she calls for backup one last time. Instead of one bomb, you now have three bombs in quick succession trying to delete you from existence while Estelle continues her assault. Damn, this woman is not playing around. Now real quick, there isn't much change with the patch, so the following strategy applies. Estelle is quite aggressive. She will make a beeline for you almost the whole fight. Much like Diva and Commissioner, she is best attacked after she fails to attack you. If you try to get her as she comes towards you, she will most likely do her 3 hit combo on you. If you are far from her, she will usually close in with a flying kick. When she is medium range, she may opt for the overhead elbow. And she is immaculate with her anti-air flip kick, so I suggest you stay grounded. Be careful when grabbing her. She can break out quickly and she may use that flip kick in response. Also, give her space when you knock her down because the flip kick is her go-to counter. If you grab her, throw or slam her quick, but be warned because she may land on her feet after being thrown. I believe combos are your best bet with Estelle. When she calls for backup, time your attacks wisely. Attack after the bombs fall and when she is wide open. Cut some of your combos short because the bombs will interrupt you. When the Ferocio Cops appear, dispatch them quickly. They, along with Estelle and the bombs, can combo you with devastating results. Feel free to throw the Donut Gang at Estelle. Use those specials and star specials if you have to. You got her on the ropes, but now she's calling for the Triple Bomb Attack. Stay clear of those red circles. Wreck Estelle in between attacks. Don't corner yourself because she will use those bomb hits to her advantage and don't forget the little firewall they create Keep catching Estelle after her attacks. Use any weapons you see on the battlefield against her. Dodge and attack. Let her come to you. Use her aggressive nature against her and you will put this Terminator down for the count. Looks like she finally learned her lesson. Or did she? Oh snap, look who's back, it's Barbon. For my Streets of Rage 2 fans, this dude should be quite familiar. First boss of that game, rips shirt and yells, come on, owns a bar, has a nasty habit of yelling "Heats" while chucking you all over the place. Well, now I think he stepped his game up a bit. Now he has a really gangster bar, connected to a sewer for some reason, complete with a biker gang ran by Monique, a badass kangaroo bartender named Rue, and a ton of choppers in the back. Also, he's paying some homage to Freddie Mercury. Much respect. But we gotta get to business. Let's see what skills he has while trying to take our heroes down. Good news! He no longer throws you! Maybe because most of us Streets of Rage vets are skilled at landing on our feet. Bad news? He's been practicing his kicking game. A lot. Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. His most common attack is the gut punch, roundhouse combo. Dude is fast and flexible. He relentlessly attempts to punch you in the stomach and then follow up with a roundhouse kick that'll humble you. The roundhouse kick is the kick that Barbon favors the most and he has several variations of it. Barbon has a charge up double roundhouse kick. When you see him charge up like he just had White Castle the other night, He'll gain that white anti-stagger armor glow, then perform two roundhouse kicks that have good range and allows him to go up and down diagonally. If you are cornered, he can nail you with both kicks. It gets worse. During the second stage of the fight, he does the roundhouse kick four times in a row. He covers more ground and moves with great speed in any direction except straight up and down, unless he's against the wall. Told you he stepped his kick game up. Oh, and he has anti-stagger armor the whole routine. Great. Barbon has one more kick up his sleeve, the high kick. He uses it for anti-air purposes quite often, 
but sometimes he'll just walk up and hit you with it, especially if you keep dodging his gut punch. Oh, and he has anti-stagger armor during this kick as well. As you can tell, Barbon isn't playing around, and if you go in gung-ho, he's going to trash you. Time for some tactical advice. You have to be quick with this guy. He will run circles around you easily. He strikes fast. He's aggressive. His gut punch has range, so if you are face to face, he'll most likely tag you. Dodge the punch, and then quickly come from above and below and combo him. Throw him around as well. The point is to break through his offense and close the distance. When he charges up for the double roundhouse, you have several choices depending on your skill level and confidence. You can either give him a lot of distance, which won't be as effective when he does the quadruple kicks later, jump after each kick, or run circles around him by moving towards him after each kick and going above and below him. This takes practice. The safest method is to time your jump after each kick because the hitbox will rarely if ever hit you while you are in the air. Notice I said just jump and not jump attack. I mean neutral jump. If you jump attack, it may slow you down in mid-air a tad and may lead you to getting kicked by the next hit. Strike quickly or move after the roundhouses because Barbon could cancel into the high kick. If you cannot match Barbon's speed, then you have to outmaneuver him. There's one more danger that you must be aware of that actually isn't Barbon himself. You see all those parked motorcycles? If you break them, you'll get access to money, food, and some potent weapons. What's so dangerous about that? It comes with a price. Remember those biker chicks with the helmets that I threw a fit about in my first enemy guide? Every bike you break, one jumps out of the bar and immediately begins to cause you trouble. Those constant shin kicks, that damn headbutt, and they will help set Barbon up with combos that'll ruin your day. Break those bikes at your own risk. Oh, and Barbon can miss his attacks on you and break the bikes instead. Have fun. On Boss Rush, you'll only see a few Sugars and Galsias that will show up based on how much health Barbon has left. What a relief. Now we have the second stage. Everything is the same except that the double roundhouse kick is now a quadruple roundhouse kick. Running away won't save you. The tactics I gave still applies, but let's make it easy. Get distance so he will miss one or two kicks, then neutral jump over the last kicks, or do the dodge maneuver that I said earlier. When dodging, it's like you two are making an X, you're crossing over each other's path. Throw in a jump attack or two near the end. Just mind your timing. Be careful if he kicks an object while you dodge him, because the timing will change and you might wind up getting hit. For some reason, when he kicks an object, he kind of freezes in place, so it will mess up your timing. Don't be afraid to start this fight with a weapon, especially with the 8 ball on the bar. It does quite a bit of damage. That busted up motorcycle chassis in the middle is amazing as a weapon as well. If the biker women show up, throw them at Barbon, take them out quick. In short, stay on your toes, use everything at your disposal, catch him off guard, outmaneuver his assault, and don't get greedy. If you are good, you can beat this guy one on one with no interference and turn him into a joke. Get his AI down to a science and you'll make him think twice about making another appearance in the Streets of Rage game ever again. Here comes the rematch, Shiva has arrived. Ever since Streets of Rage 2, this guy has had a fan following. He was considered to be harder than Mr. X, the final boss of Streets of Rage 2, when he first appeared. Shiva's badass look and amazing martial arts skills amazed players and was seen as a worthy rival to our heroes. He then popped up in the third game, got defeated as the first boss, and now runs a dojo in Streets of Rage 4, and he has some new moves up his sleeve. For some reason, he no longer does the final crash, slam attacks, or some of his surprise attacks from Streets of Rage 3. But don't take him lightly, he is the master of the palm strike. It is a basic but effective attack since it has good range, can hit diagonally, and has anti-stagger armor, not too shabby. Shiva maintains the flaming leg kick, it can be used as anti-air as well as a quick attack to keep you from pressuring him too much. 
There's also a slow moving variation where he does the double flaming leg kick. He uses this move to close the distance, but from my experience, it rarely connects unless you are quite careless. And trust me, both kicks will hit you if you are being careless. When Shiva needs to put on the hurt, he'll unleash his combo attack. It is a 5 hit attack that consists of 2 punches, a palm strike, a high kick, and a flaming leg kick. It is a move that you don't want to take lightly. Luckily, you can power out of this move with your special as of the new patch. Once Shiva loses about 20% of his health, he unveils a new maneuver, the Shadow Clone. The screen freezes and outspawns a ghostly clone of Shiva that leaps towards you and performs a palm strike three times in a row. Once Shiva takes more than 50% damage, he spawns two Shadow Shiva clones that do the leap and palm strike three times in a row. They tend to line up with you, but also spread out to trap you while Shiva advances towards you to perform his combo attacks. So, how do we put this guy down for the third time? Well, if you just go straight in for the attack, you'll be eating his palm strikes. Let's set a few things straight. Shiva can block weapons sometimes, so be very careful. Grabbing Shiva from the front is pointless because he'll break out of it extremely quickly. Now, if you are quick to throw him, surprise, surprise, he'll land on his feet, not effective. Also, when you combo him, he will simply land on his feet. Even if you slam him, he'll quickly recover. He's extremely light on his feet. If he doesn't walk towards you, he's jumping all over the battlefield, flustering your attempts to kick his tail. Now that that's out of the way, there are two main effective ways to fight him. After he attacks, or as he comes towards you to do his combo attacks. He's wide open after his double flaming leg kick and his palm strikes, especially from behind. Do combos as your main attack. If you're feeling bold, you could get in some extra hits while he is trapped on the edge of the screen, but he will most likely palm strike with anti-armor or flaming leg kick his way out. On one player, you have it kinda easy. You just have to deal with Shiva and his clones, which disappear after their third attack. Don't try to hit them by the way, it's no use. On multiplayer, you have Shiva, the clones, and several groups of ravens and condors. Yes! Those cheap kickboxers are here to stand up for their sensei. Get rid of them ASAP. Throw them at Shiva. Use weapons, especially the meat cleaver, or unleash that star special. If you don't, you will suffer greatly. Trust me. As his health dwindles, Shiva will unleash one clone, and then two clones once he's close to defeat. He can do this clone attack back to back, so be careful. Dodge the clones. Don't hit Shiva unless you need to stop his assault or the clones are not near you. The earlier strategies still apply. Catch his openings, get good combos in, forget throws, forget weapons unless absolutely necessary. Trash any and all kickboxers nearby, and stay mobile. Shiva will quickly capitalize on your unattendedness. Keep up the pace, and you will soon humble one of the greatest martial artists Wood Oak City has ever seen. It's payback time! Estelle reporting for duty! She's back! True to her duty, Estelle returns for another round. She's quite pissed. She wants justice and her rematch. Well, you've beaten her before, so no worries, right? Well, Estelle usually opens up with a new move. The grenade toss. Damn! Off the bat, she's trying to blow you to bits. I guess she's not interested in arresting you anymore. She still has her other moves though, the flying spin kick, the flip kick, the overhead elbow, and the three hit combo. Standard Estelle procedure. How about that throwback Streets of Rage 1 special with the bombs? He's back too? The damn commissioner? And if you're a psycho enough to play Mania, two of them? Good god, they aren't joking! How could it be two commissioners on the police force? Okay, okay, let's calm down. All hope isn't lost. Let's go through the tactics here. Handle Estelle like you did the first time you fought her. Watch out for the anti-air, avoid her attacks, and strike. With the grenade, if you are quick enough, you can pick it up and throw the grenade back at Officer Sourpuss over here. Only pick them up and throw it if they land close to you. 
they explode quick. Otherwise, dodge and ignore them. Be careful because she can combo you into the grenade and do great damage. However, if you hit her with a grenade, you can combo her right back. Now the good news is that as of the patch, the damage has been scaled for combos. So if you get hit by more than one grenade as well as being comboed into them, you won't take as much damage. Before the patch, you took full damage and a lot of times you died really quick. That's fine and dandy, but uh, what about the commissioner? Let's go over some good news due to the patch. The commissioner in this fight used to be well adorned with anti-stagger armor with most of his moves, thus making it extremely difficult to keep him down. Now, that armor has been taken away, and is only seen when he does his throw move and sometimes during recovery from a knockdown. Now even without the patch nerfs, the beatdown you gave the commissioner at the police station humbled him some. For starters, he no longer does the gigantic pressure attack. Sorta. Of. He'll do the gigantic pressure pose and glide towards you diagonally at a reduced distance, then grab and slam you. But not up against the wall, he does that throw toss thing. If he misses, he can walk a short distance and still do the grab and slam. He still does the red glowing attack where he walks up to you and slams you on the ground. Kind of redundant if you ask me since he already has that same slam move. He still has the overhead punch, but only the single hit variety. With the weakened commissioner, even if there are two of them, you still stand a chance. Estelle calls for backup when she has lost roughly 20% of her health. Her moveset won't change, but she moves so fast she will likely ambush you while you battle the commissioner. He has a lot of health, but not boss health. Use your crowd control skills with this fight. Toss those grenades at them if possible. If you are lucky, you'll hit them all. If you isolate any of these guys, wreck them hard with their combos. Throw them at each other, and don't be shy with those star specials. Use weapons if you got them. By all means, hit the commissioner when he glows red and charges you. Stay out of the reach of the gigantic pressure toss move. Whenever Estelle isn't being closely guarded, goad her into attacking and focus on giving her big damage. If she goes down, the fight will end automatically. That's right, you only have to beat Estelle to end the fight. I suggest making Estelle a priority. But if the commissioner is too much, and you are used to Estelle's AI, feel free to trash him before focusing on Estelle. Without her police bombs, her difficulty is quite reduced. Don't get surrounded. Keep moving and take any and all openings. Send all these clowns back to desk duty. SOS! Call all the single ladies! It's Bayo and Riha! Bayo and Riha. Why do those names sound so familiar? Oh. Diva has two twin sisters named after some of the biggest divas in music history. Clever girls. The problem is, they aren't as pleasant as their namesakes, for they are quite fiery and toxic. But seriously, where do these women get these damn elemental snakes from? No matter. We gotta talk about what makes them similar and different from their big sister. Bayo is the blue one with the poison power. And for some reason, she's fast as hell. How does she walk that damn fast in high freaking heels? Then again, she is a diva. Anyways, good news. The patch got rid of her anti-stagger armor when she does the snake strike. Bad news? She moves faster after the patch. Much like her sister, she has the diva pose, which has anti-stagger armor still. But instead of electricity, she releases a toxic puddle that drains your health while you stand in it. And it also slows down your movement, so be careful. Luckily, it is recoverable health, so long as you do damage and don't get hit. But that's where Bayo's snake strike comes in. She can deploy this move extremely fast, even if she misses. And she will use it a lot! During stage 2 of the fight, she creates a much larger poison puddle. If you are in an art gallery, you have little room to maneuver, so you could lose a lot of green health and then get hit by the snake strike out of nowhere. No bueno. Rhea, on the other hand, takes a more long distance and slower approach to attacking. Her diva pose is adorned with the power of fire. If you touch the fire pit, you'll take damage and go flying. 
Rhea is also known to spam this move often if you stay near her, and the pose comes with anti-stagger armor, so you are less likely to cancel the move. Her snake strike is slow, but she'll do it at a distance, so while you are chasing her sister, you won't notice. She gains anti-stagger armor when charging the attack, but not during the attack like she did pre-patch. A long distance flame will emit from the snake, and you will either get hit, or she'll limit your movement space in that art gallery. Speaking of maneuver room, during stage 2 of the fight, the fire pit gets bigger. Which means you could very well get trapped in corners, so the sisters can tag team you. Even worse, Riha will most likely do the massive fire pit attack right after the flaming snake strike. Be careful. So, you have a super fast close combatant, and a very slow long distance fighter attacking in unison. What to do? I personally like to take out Bayo first. She's highly aggressive and will defend Riha with vigor. Since she is always up in your face, show her what happens when you violate personal space. Both sisters are vulnerable to combos, weapons, and throws and slams. Sometimes they will do their fire or poison pit attacks as a recovery attack after knockdown. Do your best to focus on one sister at a time, although you can throw them into each other. If you can attack them both together, go all out with the combos and star specials. Be warned, sometimes they will randomly place their attack puddles all over the place to trap you. Although I suggested taking out Bayo first, give Riha some love if she's the only one available. Once you get one of them to roughly half health, they will pump up the volume and increase the intensity and range of their fire and poison pit attacks. The biggest danger in this fight is how the ladies can team up on you so easily. They will attempt to trap you in a small area where you'll either get comboed or lose recoverable health only to get tagged by a single hit. Keep up the pressure on the weakest sister, especially if it is Bayo since she loves close quarters. Don't sit still, keep assaulting the sisters when the opportunities arise and soon you'll be in a 1 vs 1 match. After that, pick apart the remaining superstar with any attacks you wish. She should be easy pickings no matter who it is since you don't have to worry about the other lady surprising you. Make sure these two divas are no longer in the top 40 charts. Whoa, Max? What are you doing here? Max is a boss? Playable Streets of Rage 2 Max is a boss? Yep. Sadly, the syndicate got a hold of the big guy somehow and hypnotized him with crappy music. Probably mumble rap in order to turn him against the heroes. Someone is a Psychomantis fan. Also, how does crappy music give you glowing red eyes? Well anyways, Max is a vicious one since the new patch. He used to be quite easy to strategic players, but now he's much more formidable. Let's find out why. Right off the bat, you'll notice one thing. Max is covered in anti-stagger armor the whole fight. That's right. Only a star special or a grenade will floor him for you boss rush players. So that means you need to pick your spots carefully when attacking him. The first move we will mention is the drop kick. Pre-patch, he did this move if you were really far away. Now he deploys it at a shorter distance and it will send you flying. Luckily, it is easily telegraphed if you are paying attention. Another move is the slam. Max telegraphs by hulking out and roaring. Pre-patch Max didn't turn red, but now he does. Then, he makes a beeline towards his prey and grabs them. If you don't press the face and d-pass button fast enough, he will slam you hard on the ground and do extreme damage. During the second phase of the fight, you need to make sure you do not get grabbed at all. There is no breaking out, you'll just get slammed. Be sure to do a jump attack to avoid this. Pre-patch Max did not have this insta-slam by the way. Oh. And be careful because Max can slam you into others. Pre-patch Max did more damage to the player caught in the aftermath than the person he was slamming. Luckily, you no longer have to worry about this. Max is also known for the axe handle. He telegraphs this by twisting his body and shaking before spinning around in one place. Touching him at any moment will cause you to go flying. In the second stage of the fight, he spins, moves up and down while coming towards you slowly. He can very well trap you in the corner, so be careful. Max's most infamous move besides that deadly slam is the charging shoulder attack. He telegraphs this by getting in a charging stance and shaking before flying at you faster than even your fastest characters. 
During the second stage of the fight, he does this move three times in a row with little break in between. He can charge at you straight or diagonal, but not straight up and down unless he gets slightly wall stuck. Pre-patch max could combo you up to three times with each hit, but now you just get knocked down by one hit. Alright, so how do you beat one of the most OP playable characters in Streets of Rage history that now has a permanent anti-stagger armor and wants you freaking dead? Let's get one thing out of the way first. He is way more aggressive now. Attacks can come back to back, especially during the second stage, so you have to take every open window Max gives you. During the first stage, he leaves himself open a lot. Hit him in between attacks. As long as you know what's coming, you should be able to go in, get some hits, then evade the attacks. If he's getting too aggressive for you, don't be afraid to use a star special. Luckily, he tells you what he's going to do. Now, if you are doing multiplayer, this behemoth gets help. In addition to a powerful wrestler, now you have several groups of these discount Shug Knights that fall from the sky. What's with the falling from the sky thing in this damn game? And risk getting body slammed and shot. Come on, man. You gotta incapacitate these clowns as quick as you can because you need to focus when fighting Max. Throw the gun dudes at Max if you can to tack on damage. Alright, you're doing good, but Max is ready to turn it up. Now his moves are upgraded and he attacks much faster. Which means you have a smaller window to attack. Dodge those drop kicks. Stay away from corners and Max himself when he spins around because he can combo you. When he turns red and charges you, you must cancel the attack. Jump attacks only because he could power through your ground attacks and insta slam you. As far as the triple tackle, treat it like Barbon's quadruple roundhouses. Create distance to make it harder for him to reach you or neutral jump his tackles. Be sure your timing is on point. If you manage to sneak a weapon to the arena, use it. Especially pipes. The reach on them is freaking amazing. One more note. Sometimes after doing an attack, Max will directly cancel right into another attack without his telegraph poses. A bit unfair in my opinion, but it isn't too common. Just make sure you keep your health up. In short, attack him while he's a sitting duck. Learn his moves and dodge them. Don't be shy with star specials and weapons. You must knock some sense back into this guy. Let us hope that one day we can utilize his amazing power ourselves. Move over Daft Punk, DJ K Washi on deck. Ah, this dude. Whether he's being controlled by the syndicate, or he's the mastermind behind the mind control music, this electro goof is here to light up your night. With his unique light attacks and groovy shield, he can be a bit tricky to fight, but in my opinion, he himself isn't too terrifying. Either way, it is my opinion, and he could be difficult for someone else, so... Let's go over the moveset. This dude is quick. He prefers to float above the ground and perform his attacks on either side of the stage to fully utilize his powers. During the first stage of the fight, he does three attacks before going idle. All of his moves are color coded, so you can tell what he will do just by looking at his colorful aura. When the DJ turns blue, he launches two small blue projectiles in a straight line. Nothing too impressive. When he turns green, he launches two green discs on the ground that travel in an M or W formation. It isn't very damaging, but it is annoying due to the movement. When Kawashi turns red, he charges up for a brief moment and launches a fireball. It is always the final maneuver in an attack series before he goes idle. Be advised that instead of using anti-stagger armor, this guy has an actual shield complete with its own health bar. While he has it on, the DJ will take no damage. Once it is gone, then you can do damage on him. More on that later. Now, during the second stage of the fight, he'll do four attacks before going idle. And he adds a new move. When the DJ turns yellow, he spawns a single yellow disc on the ground. It'll travel a short distance towards you, stop, then move towards you again. It lasts for most of the DJ's barrage, which is why he usually deploys the yellow disc as the first or second attack. Also, he charges up the red fireball longer, which results in the larger fireball that can send you flying. Simple enough, right? 
only if you are paying attention. Get in close and wail on his shield. If you can get behind him or right on top of him, you'll get a lot of free hits in. Just dodge the red and blue attacks. The green you have to jump over or time the pattern so you can walk by the discs. Once the shield's health is gone, Kawashi will become disoriented and vulnerable. Beat the living snot out of him with any moves in your arsenal. I advise that you bring the sledgehammer from the rooftops. Kill the shield, then bludgeon him like a madman. But beware. After he loses a certain amount of health, two red signals and a gold show up. Yep, Suge Knight returns again. During the pre-patch, he will send red and blue signals instead. So now you have to worry about being thrown or shot in addition to the DJ's attacks. You can continue to do damage to him as he regenerates his shield until he flies to the edge of the screen. Now when the second stage begins, the same procedures still apply, except now you might get chased by the yellow disc, and the DJ does 4 attacks instead of 3. Also, more mooks will show up. Dodge the disc, which usually shows up as the first or second attack. Draw it away from the boss, so that when you go in on him, the disc won't interfere. Get behind him, trash the shield, then trash him. Pretty simple pattern. Just pay attention to his colors, destroy the lackeys, and give him your all once his shield is down. It is about time you end this dude's career and make him a one-hit wonder. The new head honcho of the syndicate, Mr. Y. Well, 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 if it isn't the big cheese, or at least one half of the big cheese. The other half is his crazy sister, whom we will meet later. When I see this dude, I think of a mix between an anime character version of Alfred Ashford and a crooked evil Chadley. He's a chip off the old block as far as Mr. X is concerned. Wait. What lady was crazy enough to procreate with that cackling psycho and then birth these Disney kids gone bad? Anyways, his fighting style is quite similar to the old man. He does not like to get physical and prefers to use weapons, lackeys, and that stupid laugh to frustrate his opponents. Let's see what the little fiend is all about. Let me start with this. Pre-patch, he wasn't as evasive. Now if you approach him, he'll do a back roll to get distance from you before unleashing an attack. So it gets to be quite difficult to catch him. He has a limited yet effective move set. Dude is packing a submachine gun similar to an Uzi. He loves the damn thing. His most common attack is the short gun burst. This move can come really quick. Sometimes he instantly fires the minute he points at you, and other times there's a slight delay. He gains anti-stagger armor when firing his gun. Friggin' goof. It isn't very damaging, but he does it often enough that it poses a threat. Mr. Y has a more dangerous version of the gunfire attack. He'll jump or walk to the upper left or right hand corner of the screen, gain anti-stagger armor, then spray and pray in a 90 degree radius. During the second stage of the fight, he fires more bullets, covers more areas, and sweeps the area twice. This means you have very little room to dodge and less spaces to stand when he fires, so you'll either have to jump the bullets, yes, you can actually jump the bullets, or get behind him to avoid getting hit. If Mr. Y has problems hitting you in the second stage of the fight, he will jump to the edge of the screen, jump forward while opening his coat, and toss out a group of grenades. You can throw them, but they are often near each other and detonate quickly, so it's best to avoid them all together. I have no idea where he's getting all these grenades from. Jeez. Oh, and anti-stagger armor on a grenade spam. Can't forget that. The final attack Mr. Y performs is quite over the top. In the second stage of the fight, he tries to light you up with a submachine gun, blow you to bits with grenades, and annihilate you with a freaking rocket launcher. That's right, when pressed, Do will do a roll backwards and suddenly spawn a rocket launcher. There's a second delay before he fires, but as expected, if it hits you, you'll pay. Oh and it can move slightly up or down depending how far the rocket is coming from. This kid has freaking lost it. I mean, dude. Be warned. The rocket launcher attack also comes with anti-stagger armor, so you're not gonna cancel it. Oh, 
And finally, he laughs at you and gains anti-stagger armor. That's it. No lie. What an arrogant little marmoset turd. But real quick, while editing this video, I noticed that the laugh actually precedes the uh, spray and pray move he does. I usually get so caught up in battle, I don't notice these things. I love doing these editing guides. Alright, time to teach this Mr. X Larva some respect. He's incredibly agile. Stay on him. Be careful about being directly in front of him because he might pop off a few shots instantly. A lot of times, while he is shooting, you can get so close to him, his shots miss you, and you can just pummel him while his anti-stagger armor is on. If you manage to stagger him, give him that work with your best combo. If your character has good reach, you can stun him without getting too close so you can keep him from spamming his evasive maneuvers. When he does his spray and pray attack, either get behind him or jump over the bullets if you are too late. It can be tricky, but you'll get the timing eventually. If you are on multiplayer, Mr. Y will summon a group of Miley Cyruses from the sky, AGAIN? When he loses a bit of health. And of course, it had to be the short kicking, evasive, rapid slapping Miley Cyruses. Trash them quickly, because Mr. Y will use this opportunity to engage you from afar. Once he loses about 40% of his health, he'll really bring the heat. Now he'll throw grenades from his coat, jump around more frequently, deploy more Miley Cyruses on multiplayer, and deploy the rocket launcher. I need to know how the grenades in the rocket launcher don't destroy the cockpit or the plane for that matter. Jeez! Same procedures still apply. He's vulnerable after the grenade attack. Just make sure the grenades aren't near you while you pummel him. I personally would not bother throwing him at him. As for the rocket launcher, go up or down to dodge or get behind Mr. Watt. Be advised that the rocket moves slightly up and down as a reminder. So basically, stay on the twerk. Dodge the gunfire, keep Miley Cyrus out of your business, and show this little Neo fight exactly why their dad wound up as a brain in the jar after messing with you and your crew. Oh look, the other half of the deadly duo, Miss Y. Look at this Alexia Ashford XB, sitting in her chair being all posh, prim and proper. Once upon a time, this teeny bopper was a complete joke as a penultimate boss. She barely attacked, had few damaging moves, and was quite predictable. But now, the matriarch of the syndicate got a buff from the recent patch, and it is working wonders. Let's see how. This goofy girl is a slippery one. No dirty jokes, please. I mean, she jumps all over the goddamn place like a flea before striking you with that damn fencing sword. Anytime you approach her, she becomes a jumping bee. Her most common attack is the sword thrust. She has two main versions, a quick one where she pokes you once, and another with a flurry of thrusts. What makes this move dreadful is that she can spam it, especially the flurry of thrusts, in which she can stun lock you. She also has an anti-stagger armor sword thrust, where she glows white and hits you with an entire sword combo, which does pretty good damage. I trick her into attacking, then hit her because she'll just power through your hits. Miss Y has another fancy move. She glows red, charges you, and then does a vault and undercut attack. You can hit her to cancel the attack, but if you don't, she'll flip over you, then swipe at your legs to knock you down. What a fiend. She's not done yet. During the second stage of the fight, she unveils her ultimate attack. Lightning emits from her sword, and then she thrusts from one side of the screen to the next, and then back again. Sometimes, she does the move twice so she can get in four thrusts, and she tracks you quite well. Before the patch, this move was laughable. She thrusts forward at a diagonal with no tracking, then jump and thrust forward again often missing her opponent. Either jump the thrusts, or stick to the edge of the screen and dodge. Oh, anti-stagger armor the whole attack. You saw that coming. Okay, time to take her down. She's a tricky one. Her constant jumping will frustrate you, so you'll either have to chase her down, which may be hard with a slow character, or wait for her to charge at you with her thrust attacks. 
If you can jump kick her, do so. Do your best to follow up with a combo after doing so because she will stretch this fight out. If you're doing multiplayer, you're going to be in for a fight because Miss Y has several ways with those pesky shadow cop ninjas helping her. They are even faster than Miss Y and toss a million ninja stars at you. Oh, and as of the patch, when you break the armor to get food, a shadow with a full bar of health will pop out and attack you even on one player. Come on! Second stage of the fight, she continues her jumps and stabs, but now she has her electric sword attack. She'll do this move more often. It can be tough to dodge, so make your timing count when it comes to your jumps. The edge of the screen is a good place to avoid her tracking attacks, as well as catching her after she's done. Miss Y stepped it up a bit, but I know you can take her down. Catch her with your biggest combos, avoid her sword play, and you'll finally send this Nickelodeon star packing. But there is one problem, you didn't actually beat her. She's retreating, and her brother escaped earlier, so you know it isn't over. Time to finally put an end to this nonsense once and for all with the final battle. Mr. and Miss Y, the final showdown. You've dealt with divas, persistent cops, bikers, and brainwashed friends. Now, you get to take it to Mr. X's lingering offspring. The good news is that they lost a bit of zest after the previous beatings you gave them. The bad news is that they are keen on using teamwork. Let's see what tricks they have up their sleeves this time. And, we got the city in the background, the cherry blossoms adorning the arena, an ominous Mr. X memorial, and two punk ass spoiled brats who need to be taken down a peg or three. As I hinted earlier, the twins are slightly weaker. They tone down some of their moves, but that doesn't mean they are complete pushovers. For starters, Mr. Y no longer does the Stage 2 Spray and Pray method, just a regular one. He still has access to his evasive roll, grenade spam, short gun burst, and rocket launcher. Miss Y doesn't do the constant stunlock sword poke she loves doing. She still has access to the vault and undercut move, the anti-stagger armor combo, and her electric sword charge. She is still evasive as hell, but not nearly as much as the first time you fought her. So the challenge is dealing with a long distance explosive fighter and a close encounter combo queen at the same time. Your best bet is to target one at a time, specifically the one that gives you the most trouble. If you happen to get them together, let them have it. It's the final fight, zero need to hold back. If you do about 75% damage to one of the twins, the fight stops. Why? What the frog piss is going on? A giant mech? Overkill much? I mean, Mr. X had robots deployed in the past, but not a giant spider mech. What was the syndicate planning with this mechanical abomination? Okay, okay. Let's focus. A few notes about this rust bucket. Pre-patch, you had to knock about 25% health off of one of the twins in order to stop the fight and deal with the robot. The twin you beat up is the twin that boards the mech first, while the other twin stays on the ground to run interference. So choose who you beat up carefully. Be advised, the twin that hops in the behemoth will be restored to full health. Now for the move set. It is the same no matter who is riding it. One move it does is the one leg sweep. You'll see it lean to one side with one of its legs before sweeping it through the middle of the battlefield. It can do this multiple times in a row. Another basic move it has is the single leg smash. It'll lift one leg up for a few seconds before smashing hard on the ground. This is another move it can do repeatedly. The leg smash can create a small shockwave that can hurt you if you are too close. Both moves can alternate legs between attacks, so be careful. The robot can also lift both front legs at the same time and come crashing down with the smash move. Now pre-patch, 
These were the only moves the robot would do until you defeated the driver or the twin on the ground. Then it would perform a whole new move set. Now, the robot will do the previously mentioned moves as well as the new moves I will mention in a bit, no matter what the situation is. Also, once the rider is defeated, the robot will still act on its own for a bit until the remaining twin hops in. The good news is that the remaining twin does not replenish health. So, about these new moves. The sweep move involves both legs this time. You'll see one leg move back and forth slightly before sweeping across the middle, shortly followed by the other leg. You can get comboed by both legs, so beware. The stomp is upgraded as well. It still involves one leg, but it hits the ground three times in a row up and down. You don't want to be anywhere near that leg, trust me. Remember the double leg stomp? Well in pre-patch, the robot still did it except it will hit the ground very quickly multiple times. If you were anywhere in the middle near the top of the screen, you got nailed. I spent a lot of time to see if the robot did this move after the patch, but it refused to. Guess they got rid of it. Oh well. And finally, the most annoying move. The multiple alternating leg smashes. It'll lift one leg before crashing down, then hits the ground with the other leg, then back and forth in different places for a total of 6 attacks. Oh, and the shockwave of the impact can still get you. It can hit almost anywhere in the field. You have two options when fighting this thing, but first let me give you some amazing news. Since the patch, the defense of the robot has been greatly reduced. In other words, you can do great damage to the robot, unlike pre-patch where the robot took a long time to defeat. This is to make up for how much damage you have to do to the twins before fighting the mech in the first place. Now that I have given you hope, you can either trash the robot exclusively, including when the other twin hops in, or you can defeat the marauding twin on the ground so that you can then focus on the robot. Either way is effective, but I like to target the behemoth due to its weak defense. Hit those legs hard, fast, and often. Keep an eye on the leg movements. The middle is the most dangerous area to be. If you must go there, watch those leg movements. You can jump in the air if you think a smashing leg is going to shockwave you to avoid the hit. Now, if you manage to survive all of the craziness of the castle, I say carry a weapon like a mace or a sword all the way to the final boss. Weapons absolutely wreck this thing. And as long as you hit the robot, the weapon won't break. Complete freaking ownage. In short, study the robot's moves. Avoid the sweeps and hits. Pay special attention to the remaining twin. You'll either have Mrs. Y all up in your face with her swordplay, or Mr. Y shooting at you from afar. Keep an eye on them vigilantly. Once you take down the last twin, enjoy the fireworks, and rejoice, for you have saved Wood Oak City from these psycho kids once and for all. Congratulations, hallelujah, it's freaking done. And there you have it, every boss in the game and how to kick their tails. I want to thank you for watching whether you watch the whole video or you pick certain bosses that you want to see go down in flames. If you enjoyed this guide, hit that gorgeous like button for the algorithm, leave a comment, and subscribe for more gaming goodness. Be sure to share for those who might be having trouble with this game. I had a blast making this video and I look forward to making many more. Until then, this is Nostradante, signing Frig off. Peace in the Middle East, Chicken Grease, and all of that groovy stuff.